you everybody for coming to what is truly a great day. Thank you, the middle school, high school band, uh, Mr. Cavanaugh, all the teachers that were able to come here today. Um, we're going to be presenting uh, President Weingarten up here in a second. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to bring up our uh, superintendent of school, Dr. Christine Finn. Welcome everyone. I am so, so excited to have everyone here, especially President Weingarten. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our very wonderful band. Give them a hand, please. And our student thespians, may the fourth be with you. So my comments will be very brief. Uh, I was asked by the interviewer uh, what, how we did this, and the answer that just kept coming up out of my mouth was collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. And today the collaboration that we are celebrating is that with the teachers. So teachers, you helped us to do this, and we cannot be more proud. So please let's give a hand to them. I'm an English major, so I always come up with a metaphor that represents something, and the metaphor I came up with at two in the morning last night is like a big, delicious cake. And when you make a delicious cake, you have lots of people helping you, people you might not even see, people who create the materials, who grow them, who collect them, you buy them, you prep them, and then finally, there's somebody that cooks the cake, okay? So we have here our central office administrators, we have our teachers, we have our students, we have our Board of Education, we have our principal. All of these people play a role in cooking all those materials together. But the most important part of it is the chef, yes? We don't just have cooks, we have master chefs. And I congratulate every one of you on this very real honor. And I hope you remember this day. It is a very important one. Besides being May the 4th, it is Teacher Appreciation Week, and it is also the day that Carl Place was put on the map. <laughs> Little Carl Place. <laughs> Kids, I keep saying this to you, we were open five days a week, K to 12, every day, except if COVID closed us, and that is quite an accomplishment, and we could not have done it unless we work together. So I thank the teachers for their part in that. Thank you very much. Enjoy the celebration. We're just going to bring up a couple more people before uh, President Weingarten speaks. Um, so let's bring up uh, Beth Morrow. She's a Jerry Lane teacher. She's going to say a few words. I really didn't know I was, but uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, just wanted to say that I agree wholeheartedly with Dr. Finn that from the very, very beginning, it was a collaboration, that the teachers felt safe, that we knew that we all wanted to be here, and as long as we worked together, we could do that, we could accomplish anything, and I think we've done that. So I thank everyone involved, and that's it. Okay, next we're gonna hear from uh, Leslie Rubenstein, the social studies chairperson, and world languages. Hi, everybody. Um, I just really want to send my heartfelt thanks out to all of the teachers. Uh, of course, I teach my own classes, but I also observe classes, and I've taken on lots of added responsibilities, as has everyone this year. And um, we all know here that teachers like to plan, right? That's, <laughs> that's what we do. We like to know how things are working. We like to anticipate what's going on and make plans for it. And this has been a year and a half where plans just got shunted to the side. And I have had to go to the well many times and ask teachers, well, I know we usually do it this way, but can you just, this year, can we just change this? And every single time, our teachers said yes. And every single time, our teachers greeted me with a smile and asked, what else they could do to help. And so I am just so thankful to work with a group of professionals like that. I know I'm making more of it than I should, but I think that Eisenhower had only a slightly more difficult task 
in his planning D-Day. <laughs> and we have done just as well. So congratulations, everybody, and thank you. That's right. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, the PTSA, uh, Mrs. Kim Riverich, for being here as well, and with whom we could not do this without the kids being here, and it's been a total, as Leslie just said, a total collaboration. Uh, I would like to bring up uh, Michael Lamone, who's the chairperson of the Fine Arts Department, because we're probably one of the few schools, my son being in the arts as well, they weren't able to put on a, uh, any plays this year, but we were able to make that happen here, and I think that's a tremendous feat. So, Mike Lamont. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. I know I'm the theater guy. I should be able to talk off the cuff, but I don't want to miss anything, so I wrote it down. I'm sorry. But good morning, everyone. Uh, President Weingarten, you honor us by being us, with us today. Welcome to Carl Place. I'm Mike Lamont. I'm the chairperson for the Fine and Performing Arts in Carl Place. I'd like to start by thanking Mike Renga and our union leadership for inviting me to speak on behalf of our teachers and, and our district today. I want to begin by thanking the members of our Board of Education, our uh, superintendent, Dr. Finn, our assistant superintendents, uh, Mrs. Fredericks, Dr. Molnar, Dr. Frank, and our building principals, Mr. DePaulo, Mrs. Folks, and Mrs. Saletti, for supporting the work that we do in the classrooms for keeping an open mind this year and for trusting us as professionals to make the safe choices that would allow our students to sing, to play wind instruments, to teach art in our classrooms, and to rehearse theater safely this year. I'm very proud to share with you some of the accomplishments of our district this year. In early December, I met on a Zoom with about 35 theater teachers uh, around Long Island. We were doing sort of a check-in on the status of everybody's theater program. In Carl Place, we had just recently finished our virtual production uh, of our fall play, Clue, and we were well on our way to beginning rehearsals for The Sound of Music. Some of my counterparts in other districts were reporting to the group they still had not been given permission to meet after school as a drama club, they had done no fall play, and they were not being given permission to do a musical at all. Um, when some schools on Long Island were making temporary switches from band and chorus over to general music, we were entrusted with the leeway to figure out how to safely sing 12 feet apart and where to play wind instruments 12 feet apart. I have been and continue to be heartened by the flexibility our faculty and administrators displayed throughout this year. When Mr. Cavanaugh needed a large space to house his band classes, our director of athletics and physical education, Chris Cerruti, said, take the girls' gym, we'll figure something out, we'll make it work. When our music teachers at Rushmore Avenue School needed a plan for the year that would include chorus, their principal, Kathy Saletti, sat down with us to figure out how to best utilize our resources so we could keep the choral programs going. When Mrs. Yonker and the Triumph Music Honor Society asked Mr. DePaulo if they could perform live music in the lobby on Friday mornings, he said, go for it. It sounds like just what we need around here. And while other districts on Long Island were canceling music and fine arts classes so they could take those music and art teachers and put them into elementary school classrooms in order to handle the overflow of students due to COVID-19 spacing requirements, our building principals and administrators made it a priority to keep music and art going this year no matter what. It was this spirit of collaboration and teamwork that inspired our art and music teachers to make the best of a tough situation, to pivot to art on a cart, mobile music in the elementary schools, and virtual music concerts and theater productions at the middle school, high school. When the CDC was telling us that six feet was a safe distance for school choruses and wind instruments, but New York State was still recommending to stay at 12 feet, Dr. Finn didn't let up on the county health department, making us one of the first districts in the county to lead us to, to move back to six feet for singing and wind instruments so that our chorus students could hear one another sing so that our band program could come back together in one room so that Mrs. Wilkinson at Cherry Lane 
could tell her kindergarten first and second graders, guess what, guys? We are going to be allowed to sing again this year. And when she did, she told me the kids started to cheer. We all know that the most important work that happens in any school district is the work that is done in the classroom between the teachers and the students. And I'm so proud of the spirit of determination and collaboration our teachers and building administrators have demonstrated in Carl Place this year. Thank you again for allowing me to speak today and thank you President Weingarten for being here with us and giving us this chance to celebrate what we've accomplished together this year. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna hear from our student representative, one of my actual students, she's an outstanding young lady, Harley Buck. Come on. Good morning, everyone. My name is Harley Buck. I'm a student here at Carl Place High School. And on behalf of the student body, I want to express how grateful we are for our teachers at Carl Place Middle School and High School. They're truly deserving of this recognition. Without their hard work and determination, students would not have had the privilege of going to school full time. Being 100% in person, five days a week, has given us, the students, a sense of comfort and normalcy this helped us persevere in light of the unforeseeable future. With the best interest in the student body, the Carl Place teachers have shown to be adaptive and resilient when online schooling and COVID protocols were introduced, all while simultaneously boosting morale inside and outside of the classroom. With the unconditional support of our teachers, students have been able to have a successful athletic season, drama club productions, and even upcoming events such as Battle of the Classes and hopefully a prom. To our teachers, we have the utmost respect and appreciation. We want you to know that your sacrifices and dedication that go into shaping the future generation do not go unnoticed, especially in times like these. Our hats are off to you today and every day, and we are proud to say that we are students at Carl Place Middle School and High School. Thank you. I say it every day to every member that I meet, and I say it to Dr. Finn, I've said it to the board, uh, I, think, I think this is the best school. I'm privileged and honored to work here uh, with the kids in the community, uh, the Board of Ed. Um, it really, once school closed last year, it was not uncommon for Dr. Finn and I to be texting at five o'clock in the morning, how can we figure out how to do what we need to do to make sure that we are back safely? Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to bring our guest of honor up. President Randy Weingart. So um, I'm going to, since the CDC has said, if you're fully vaxxed and you're outside, you can take your mask off. I'm going to take my mask off. The truth is, I am an asthmatic. So every time I have had to go through various different masks. You notice this one actually has the AFT logo on it. But various different masks to be able to breathe and wear a mask at the same time. Not unlike so many others for whom COVID, because of it being this kind of respiratory virus, if you get COVID as, and as, as an asthmatic, it's a very serious issue. But the reason I start there with being feeling like I'm unmasked is because that's what today feels like. It, it is a celebration of teacher appreciation day and week, but it's a celebration more than that of the resilience and the relationships that we call school. The, relationships that create school. Mike Ringa, Dr. Finn, the board, parents, teachers, administrators, all of it because we have this sense that the way in which we help kids thrive is through school. And frankly, those of us who have, you know, talked about virtual, we would have told you pre-COVID that virtual never works as good as in-person. 
or as well as in person. Sorry, I'm a social studies teacher, not an English teacher. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and we knew that. And we knew that being in school is so important. We've known that forever. That's why we build schools. That's why we have school. That's why we create these communities all across America. So COVID and the kind of ingenuity and changing that had to happen all the time to try to last year make you feel safe, make our members feel safe, make communities feel safe. None of this, and in some ways, as your chair of, um, you know, uh, Leslie Rubenstein said, yes, it is quite different than D-Day, but the kind of unknown and uncertainty and what to do and the collaboration that you showed, that was the glue both last year as well as this school year to see this kind of shining example of success. And so the second thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you in the moment of uncertainty for all of you to say, yes, we have to have protocols. Yes, we have to have the layered mitigation, the testing, the vaccine access, as important as that is. But the glue that brings it together is working together. And that lesson, frankly, is a lesson we need to teach every person in America, particularly every school superintendent and every group of teachers, because that is the lesson that makes things possible. But the other lesson, other than and including relationships, is the lesson of resilience. And that's what all of you have done. The sense that it is possible if we work together, the sense that we will get through this, the sense of optimism, the sense that we can have a school play, that we can have band, that we can have orchestra, that the things that people, where is Dr., where is Mr. Lamone or Dr. Lamone, the sense of possibilities that music brings and art brings, that brings passion and purpose together. So the reason I'm here is because I wanted to celebrate that. I wanted to celebrate you, and I wanted to celebrate you on this Teacher Appreciation Day. Not with words, but by showing up. And I know when the union president, the national union president shows up, it creates attention. But we need to show that every public school in America can be a place where parents want to send their kids, where educators want to work, and where our young adults thrive. I was a high school social studies teacher in New York City, Clara Barton. And when I was the New York City teacher's president, I tried to be in three schools a week because that is what helped me do my job. Watching all of you, watching all of you. It's, it, it's you know, the, the, the president of the United States put a proclamation, plac can't even speak today, even without the mask, together this weekend talking about educators and the purpose and what we do and showed up yesterday with his wife and educator at a school in Virginia to show how important it is. In school learning is vital. It recreates community. It has to be done safely. This president has given us the resources and the guidance to do it and we want to make sure that what I am seeing today, we see all over the country. I thank you, all of you, for taking the risk to follow the science. I was on Governor Cuomo's reopening plan and pushed very hard for school reopening last August, notwithstanding what anybody in the New York Post or others would say, I'm a big believer that we have to have in-school learning but you have all shown how you make it safe for everyone. You've shown that safety is the vehicle to doing what we need to do with kids. For that, I am so appreciative. But the other piece that I'm appreciative of, and I will close with this, is just the amount of turning on a dime 
trying new things, having this uncertainty. As someone said, we are nesters. We like to plan of being able to overcome our fear with facts, of being able to do all of this stuff. Because all of us, your teachers, your administrators, your parents, we want to make a difference in your lives. We want to see you thrive. That's why we do what we do. And that's why I just want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Call Place, and today you are an, an honorary member of the CBTA. Fantastic. Here is your drink for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for coming. If Mr. Cavanaugh's band wouldn't mind giving us a nice song as we end this ceremony, and we'll see everybody as we make our way through the schools today. Thank you again, for everybody, for coming.